to all you that are here in person, those are viewing by Facebook, Zoom, or YouTube. I bring you greetings from the Mount Horror Missionary Baptist Church, where we're located at 118 West Gray in the historic Fourth Ward edition of Houston, Texas, where we are led by the wonderful, dynamic pastor, Dr. Sam Lay Smith Sr., and his beautiful, lovely wife, First Lady Silva Smith. Our, our motto here at Mount Horror, this is a church where you enter not as a stranger, but as a guest of God. You are welcome, welcome, welcome. Somebody say praise the Lord. Oh, come on, y'all can do better. Man. When I go home to the country, they just say, how y'all are? And everyone responds with this, I'm good, I'm good, I'm real good. Give God a hand, praise. If you're able to stand and lift God up this morning, let's usher him into this building. Give God his rightful praise that he's doing. He's been good to us a whole nother week. Some of us got better than the week. We've got some mile markers, some anniversaries, some birthdays. We give God his praise, whatever your situation is.
And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but shall raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray, church. Father God, we, 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 we want to thank you. We praise your holy name. We magnify you. We glorify you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for divine protection. For bringing us to the house of the Lord one more time. We thank you. We thank you for everything that you've done and what you're about to do. Come now, Holy Spirit. Come into our service. Move, heal, deliver, and set free. There are people that tune in this morning. Touch them. Bless them. Bless our pastor. Anoint him to preach like never before. Somebody need a word this morning. Speak through him. In the mighty name of Jesus. We glorify your name. We magnify your name. Oh precious father. Thank you for the power of the cross. And the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you this morning, oh God, because we know we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Now have your way in us, with us, and through us. We give you all the praises and all the glory. You are our Lord, our God, our buckler, and our shield. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the church say amen.
Come on, make it feel like Sunday morning in here. Clap your hands. Let's wake him up. It's praise. It's praise time in the house. It's praise time in the house. Clap your hands. Do your dance in the house. It's praise time.
miracles still happen in the hell. Healing still happens in the hell. In the house. In the hell. Deliverance still happens in the hell. In the house. In the hell. church say amen. amen come on come on you can do better than that let the church say amen. Amen. amen amen hallelujah praise him in the house we're up to our worship time where we can worship the Lord with our substance which is our tithes our gifts and our free will offering being reminded of what the Apostle Paul said so as it is purposed in every man's heart, so shall he give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father in heaven, we come, we say thank you. We give you praise, honor, and glory. Father, we pray that you will bless this portion of worship service. We pray that you would encourage those to give as you have given unto them. God, we pray for those that desire to give but have it not, that you would give them another occasion to do so and encourage them to do so as well. This we ask in Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. For those of you who are worshiping with us uh, virtually by way of Zoom, uh, Facebook, and all those other virtual aspects, uh, there are three ways to give that our team has posted up for you. I see some uh, unfamiliar faces in the audience that are with us. For those of you who are visiting with us for the first time, uh, we don't have two or three offerings. There's only one time that we're going to give, and this will be it. So God bless you.
Jesus of my strength. You are Lord Jesus, strength of my life. I can't help it. I lift my hands in total. God, we come before your divine and 
holy presence to say to thee thank you Lord for the another for another night you have brought us through and for this day that we now enjoy we realize nobody but you watched over us all night long, kept us from harm, hurt, and danger. Then, Lord, with your tender thing of mercy, you touched us early this morning. And here we are to say unto you, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and with great expectation of all that we know you're going to do. We have a symbol here to worship you and to hear a word from you. Whatever you want to say to us, in the language of Samuel, speak, Lord, thy servant, hear thee. O oh God, how we praise you and magnify your holy and righteous name. For as we behold one another, our observation is that you've been mighty good. And that you've brought us from a mighty long way. Oh God, in view of the fact that sickness is all over the land and country. But oh, how we praise you for your sustaining grace, your keeping power. How we praise you for all that you've done. Oh God, and for what you're doing right now. Have thine own way. Have thine own way. We lift up sick and shut in. Even though they are shut in, they're not shut out. We praise you, God. We magnify your holy name. Have thine own way. Have thine own way. Throughout your land and country, we pray. Send a word through your ministers everywhere. A word of salvation. A word of consolation. A word of rejoicing. Send a word. Then Lord, we don't know how long
we have on planet Earth. But you know, the thing that we don't ask you, that when our work on Earth is done, Lord, would you just say to us, servant, well done. We do ask these blessings in the name of your son. Amen. We're going to ask our singers to do another number since y'all are so lifted up. One of these days. I get to see glory. When it's all over. When it's all over. I shall see his you to be there.
that you ought to be asking the Lord for a closer walk. For a closer walk. Because the closer you get to him, the more powerful you become. And the closer you get to him, the less problems you will have. Because he is your rock and your salvation. He is the strength of your being. And every morning when you awake, you ought to say to the Lord, just the close, walk with me. Granted, Jesus, if you please, daily walking close with me, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. And then you ought to make a true confession, I am weak, but thou art strong. And since I made that confession, keep me from all wrong, I'll be satisfied just as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. With that being said, I want to ask you to open your Bible to the prophecy of Daniel. We want to read two passages of scripture from the book of Daniel. If you don't mind standing to glorify the Lord. And the 
two passages of scripture, both are found in the book of Daniel. You will look at chapter 3 first. And reading from the 15th verse. Daniel chapter 3, reading from verse number 15. And this reading is coming from a king's mouth. And the response is coming from the children of God. Daniel chapter 3, verse 15. Now, if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, Sackbuck, psaltery, and do cymbal, and all kind of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if you worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shedrach Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king, O King Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand O king now listen to verse 18 but if not be it known unto thee O king that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. That's Daniel chapter 3. Now if you will flip to Daniel chapter 6. And we're just going to read one verse. Of that sixth chapter and that one verse is verse number 20 verse number 20 and when he had and when he came to the den he cried with a lamentable voice under Daniel and the king spake and said to Daniel O Daniel servant of the living God is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions. 
Amen. And I, I, I want to use for a subject today is your God able? I want you to listen. Is your God able? Able to do what for the pastor? And I'm not trying to be facetious when I say able to do all things and everything that prevails in our land. Is he able to deliver? Is he, a is he able to rescue We live in a time when if you want to use the vernacular of some, it's questionable. But if you want to use the vernacular of believers, It's possible, or it can be. The question that was asked in both passages was the ability of the Almighty. When we look around and in an observational way, there is a possibility that doubt can cloud your thinking. Doubt can cloud your reasoning. Doubt can cloud your expectations in a time that we live in. But I hear the song one songwriter says, you can't hurry God. You just have to wait. Trust him and give him time no matter how long it take. I hear the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 40 as he concludes that chapter he said even the youth shall faint and be weary young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up on wings like eagles, run and not get weary 
walk and not think. When, when I read that particular passage, the run and not get weary, walk and not faint, I, I explode that. And in my explanation, explanation, looking at it and reasoning, I came up with the idea that God works on his time. and not on the time of mankind. Because he knows when to step in because of who he is. And the knowledge of God, hear me if you will, God knows the capability of mankind because he made us. He knows whether or not you have a short span or a long span. He knows that. because of who he is. I hear the psalmist saying, it is he that has made us. you find that in Psalms 100. And not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pastor. The thing that we are conveying to you is one thing, get to know God. Get to know him. And once you get to know him, you'll know that there is no failure in him. Is there a witness in the house? Amen. You, 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 you know, listen to the language of the three Hebrew boys because their response was a response to a visible, already established, man-made God. And what the king was trying to do was to break the whole and belief that they, those young men had. I want you to hear me. That same thing goes on from generation to generation. There was always a task as to whether or not you are stable in your trust in who you're trusting in. That idol God that was erected by that king was a test 
of the believer's faith. And I, I want to ask today, how many believers do we have both present and listening? If you are a true believer, then your belief will be tested at some time or another. And the test is to find out how stable you are. That test came to those three who, I'm putting it in my own language, talked about the God they serve. It, it's not an unusual thing for to talk about the God you serve. Doesn't matter whether it's the living God or the man-made God. And when the language came from the king in Daniel's chapter 3, the king said that I have made a God. And this God is a God erected for your worship, your praise, your deliverance. If you don't serve the God that's before you, then you'll be cast into a fiery furnace. The response to that king's demand, and I, you heard me read it, says, we're not going to bow down and worship that God, because we are serving a God that's able. And when they made that statement, and I want you to follow me, they were speaking of whether the del deliverance come now or later. He's an able God. Walk with me. In other words, when they said, but if not, they were saying that he may not come now, but he's going to come later. Because we serve a God that's able. In other words, I don't know about you, but I'm speaking for me. I know that he's able. I know he's able. He's able to do anything but fail. Now, that being said, you see, what they said to the king, I want you to follow me. He said, if he doesn't show up now, he's able to show up later. If he doesn't show up when sickness first set in, he's able to show up any given time, and anybody here know 
that he is an able God. They said to that king, you don't know, help me out if you will, the God we serve. You see, the God you serve, you have your hands on him. The God you serve, he is visible. The God you serve, he is present. You are able to see him, but at the same time, the God we serve is also present. The God we serve is also able. The God we serve, amen, he is powerful. Help me if you will. And so they said to that king, if he doesn't show up now, the God we serve will show up. And he said that, they said that to that king, walk with me. That king threw them into the fiery furnace. You, you read it. Because of their refusing to serve and worship that golden image. But oh, my brothers and my sisters, what they said to that king, our God is able. They were standing on their faith. I wonder how many of us can stand on your faith. I hear grandma saying, he may not come when you want him, but he will always be on time. And so when they made that statement to the king, it's in your word. The king gave orders to throw them into the fiery furnace. Hallelujah. And shut the door and walked away. But oh, my brothers and my sisters, that king was disturbed. And he walked back to that furnace and opened the furnace door. Because the disturbance was the testimony that those three made. Our God is able. And oh, my brothers and my sisters, if you stand on that testimony, your faith is going to be tested. But oh, when your faith is tested, how will the test conclude? The king walked to the door, opened the furnace door, and looked inside of that furnace with amazement. He said, we threw three into that fiery furnace. But oh, my observation is that I'm looking at four now. And the four one that I look at looks like the son of god oh i want to tell you amen if you serve the true and living god you don't have to worry about whatever you have to go through with you don't have to worry about whatever you're confronted with you ought to be able to say like those three hebrew boys say our god is able isn't anybody here that know that God that you serve is able. Amen. You, you might have been sick on your sick bed, but oh, 
praise be to God. You're here today, you're saying with your presence that your God is able. Amen. And you ought to be able to say to those that does not have the faith that you have, you ought to be able to say to them because of who you serve that your God is able. Amen. In other words, you ought to be able to say to them, not only is he able, but he's also present. Not only is he present, but he's also powerful. Not only is he powerful, but he got all power in his hand. When they, those three were thrown in, they stood on the testimony that their God was able. Then when I read to you chapter 6, help me out if you will. The one that uh, had been an influence on the lives of the three that were thrown in the fiery furnace. My point is, you don't know who you're influencing when you walk right, when you live right, when you have a faith that's unshakable. You don't know who you are influencing when you make the testimony that you serve a God that's able. Because if you make that testimony somewhere in life, those that hear you, those that observe you, will have to also go through some life experiences. But when they go through those life experiences, they ought to be able to reflect back on what you said about the ability of your God. Hallelujah. And so those three boys that were cast into the fiery furnace had walked with the one that we are not talking about in chapter 6. They had walked with Daniel. They had observed Daniel's walk. What I'm saying to you today is somebody is watching you. Somebody is observing the way you walk, the way you live, the way you talk, Amen. And your talk on Sunday is, I'm serving a living God. But Monday, Tuesday through Saturday, there is a possibility for your walk to be tested. And when your walk is tested, how will you stand? How will you fare when your walk is tested? Will you throw up your hands and start screaming and hollering and running? Or will you take a definite stand like Daniel's did? Hallelujah. Daniel said to that king, Amen. King, I know that you're going to put me into a pit because of my faith. But I want to tell you before I'm cast into the pit that I serve a living God. I serve the God that's able. Daniel was cast into the pit of lions and his being casted disturbed that king all night. Hallelujah. And early the next morning, that king woke up and ran to the den of lions because of what Daniel had said to him. I serve a God that's able. I serve a God that has all power. 
I serve a God that is the only God on planet earth. Amen. And when the, uh, the king threw him in the den of lions, he didn't sleep that night because of the testimony of Daniel. Daniel say, I serve a God that's able. And that king opened that door, shouted down into the den of lions, Oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, is your God able? And I want to tell you the response that came from the den of lions. He said, my God, whom I serve is able. Anybody know that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we actually think? Well, let me close my little dissertation by dealing with the, power, the, the, the way that he established the ability in the lives and men of today. He established that, amen, when he said in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you, I'd go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Well, that statement was made, amen, by Jesus to his disciples. Amen. Was letting them know that uh, the God they serve is able. And uh, how did that become a reality? I'm glad you want to know. Amen. Because when Jesus died on the cross Friday and was buried in the grave Friday evening, he stayed in the grave. All night Friday, all day Saturday, all night Saturday night, but early Sunday morning. Oh, uh, let me back up if you will. A amen. Because in his dying, I heard him make this testimony as he breathed out his last breath. He said, into thy hands I commend my spirit. In other words, I know that if I give myself to you, then you're going to do what only you can do. And so in the hands of Jesus, in, in the hands of the Father, amen, Jesus was put to sleep. He slept all night Friday. He slept all day Saturday, all night Saturday night. But early that Sunday morning, the one that he said, into thy hand I commend my spirit, went, went to that grave. I'm just putting it in human vernacular. Went to that grave and said, wake up, son. Amen. I, I, I come to resurrect you and got him up out the grave. And because he said to the disciples, that I'm going away, I'm coming back. They had the, the, a blessed assurance that he was able to keep them. He was able to hold them. And I hear Jude saying, help me out if you will. In Jude chapter 24, he said, now uh, in uh, verse 24, he said, Now unto him that's able to keep me from falling and present me faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. In other words, he was saying, that he's able, I would tell you. Amen. And as I close my little dissertation to you today, amen, you say that you are children of God. You say that you know the Lord. You say that you're walking with the King. But my question is, in your walk and your talk and your living, is your God able? I'm so glad that he's an able God. 
I'm so glad that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm so glad that he has all power in his hand. And I want to tell you that I don't know about your God, but I want to tell you that my God is able. He's able to do it exceedingly. He's able to do abundantly above all that we actually think. And my question to you today is, is your God able? If your God is not able, let me recommend, recommend someone to you who's able, I tell you, he's able to do all things. Uh, his name is Jesus, my rock in the very land. His name is Jesus, my shelter in the mighty storm. Uh, his name is Jesus, and I hear the songwriter say, he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I'm his own. Hallelujah. Is the God you serve? Is he able? What are you saying, brother preacher? When you get in trouble, is he able to get out of trouble? When you're down on your sick bed, is he able to lift you from your sick bed? When you are all out and doesn't have, is he able to supply your every need? I don't know about you, but I serve a risen Savior. I serve a God that's able. I said, the one who walked with me, talked with me, tell me that I'm his own. How did you become his own? I'm glad you want to know when you turn it loose, your worldly ways. When you say to him, I need you to hold me. I need you to empower me. I need you to embrace me. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you ask something. When you, I heard my late brother say, when you get down to nothing, he's up to something. Because he has all power in his hand. I don't know about you. But oh, let, the, let me recommend the one who's able to you today. If you don't know how you're faring, if you don't know how your tomorrow will turn out, get to know Jesus. <laughs> Nothing. Is impossible with him. In my conclusion, the ability of the one I serve. There, there have been many times in my short tenure that the devil said to me when I get into some situations now how you going to get out of this I don't see the way out at that moment He may not come when you want him. But is there anybody here that beside me that can know that he will show up? And the reason why he will show up is because he's already present. He doesn't have to show up. He's already there. 
There is nowhere that he is not. Is there a scripture for that, brother preacher? I'm glad you want to know. Psalms 139. David says, if I take the wings of the morning and fly to the utmost parts of the earth, he's there. And if I make my bed in hell, he's there. There is nowhere that you can go that he's not there. And the reason why when you leave from where you think he is and arrive to where you are in doubt, he's there too. So I serve a God that's able, that's able. When doctors, thank you, Lord, when doctors say that there is no hope, is there anybody present that can say that where the doctors say there was no hope, Hope was there. Hope was there. The reason why is because he's an able God. He's an able God. I said, a risen Savior, he's in this world today. I know that he's living, no matter what men may say. I see his hand of mercy and I hear his voice of cheer and every time I need him he's always there he lives he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me all along life's narrow way. Oh. to him poor you ask me how I know he lived he lived within my heart and he walks with me and he talks with me tells me that I am his own and the joy we share as we tear there none other 
as ever ever known he just speaks and the sound of his voice so sweet the birds curse their singing and the melody that he gives to me within my heart is ring ring and And he talks with me, tells me that I am his own. And the joy we share as we tap, and none other has ever ever known I, I, I'm going to put you on the spot now I, I want to sing that verse again but as I sing that verse if you know that you know that you know that the Lord walks with you talks with you and commune with you if you know that you his own as I sing this verse again and he walks with me if, if you know that he is present in your life if you know that he is directing your way if you know that you're his own i just want you to stand and he walks with me and he talks with me he tells me that i the joy we share as we tarry, tarry there, none other has ever known. I'm going to sing that verse again, and I want you, if you know that he is your own, if you know that you his own, I just want you to wave your hand and he walks with me and he talks with me. He tells me that I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry. Tarry there, none other has ever known. And if there is one today that want to be a part of the Mount Her family, amen, of the Mount Her family, we invite you to come if you're not already a part of the family. If you want to become a part of the family, we invite you to come now as we extend the call to membership. The call to discipleship. If there is one today, it will give the light to the Lord on this side. In this particular, amen, I invite you to, we invite you to come. If you've never been baptized, we invite you to come as a candidate for baptism.
God bless you. And as I was to extend, it's yours.